Hello everybody, welcome to The Point for Class 2 in Play 1. I'm your instructor, Mark Battle. Well, today is all about emerging curriculum, getting ourselves ready for emerging curriculum and trying it out. I hope today that you're able to make a web of some possible ideas for a scaffolded activity. I will help you, I will mentor you, all that stuff. But emerging to me is really, really important. There's lots of different curriculum approaches out there. There's hybrids of emergent and thematic. There's thematic, there's Head Start. There's all kinds of different curriculum approaches. But I love emergent because emergent comes from the interests and passions and needs of kids, comes from the interests, needs, and passions of me as the adult, and it comes from what's going on in the community, right? And that could be family members. That could be what's going on outside in the street. Now. There's a lot of ways of doing emerging curriculum, and, and I'm hoping that you will find your own way. It requires observation. It requires you to make some inferences about those observations, and then it requires you to be able to do something about it, implement those inferences and your decisions with the curriculum, and then observe what happens and react and on and on and on. So how did I get into Emerging Curriculum? I got into Emerging Curriculum years ago, a long, long time ago. I went to college. I learned all about thematic planning, right? You open up the resource book, it's Community Helper Week, so every activity is going to be about community helpers. It's Valentine's, it's all that other stuff, right? And so I learned that style. Now, when I first started working in this field, the first job I ever got was in an infant room. Well, infants don't care about themes, do they? They don't care at all. So I didn't know what to do. So a good caregiver a colleague of mine, she said, just observe them, see what they're into, and give them what they need. They like a lot of sensory stuff, so give them a lot of sensory stuff. And I did. And I loved it. And then my next job was in school age. And in school age, they don't care about themes either. They've had enough of that all day long in school. So I didn't know what to do. So the kids told me, let us control the curriculum. Give us what we need to support us. And I went, okay. I let go. I gave them what they needed and the curriculum blossomed and flourished and I loved it. And then I finally ended up in preschool. Well, Preschool, I dusted off my theme book. Now I'm finally working with preschoolers, dusted it off, did all the themes. Kids went along with it great. Nobody got hurt. They liked it, but I didn't. I didn't find the same meaning that I found in with my work with infants and toddlers. I didn't find the same meaning as I did when I worked with school agers. So why was I doing this to preschoolers? So I worked with a colleague who was also frustrated with curriculum, and we decided, hey, why don't we observe the kids like we do with babies, make some inferences, and give them some curriculum, give them some activities based upon what we've learned about them. And let's let go. Let's let go of it and allow the kids to control the curriculum, and we can add the bits and pieces that they need that I learned from the school-agers. And we did. And guess what? I found meaning in my work. The kids found meaning in their work. And it became a much more fruitful experience in our learning community because we decided to follow their interests, their passions, their needs, my interests, passions, needs, and what was going on in the community. Because when curriculum comes from where you're at, what you're interested in, then it is meaningful to you. And that, my friends, is the point.